What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over the dark reign period of Marvel Comics. This was a year of comics where Norman Osborn took over S.H.I.E.L.D., replaced S.H.I.E.L.D. with Hammer, and he was the leader of defense for America. He even formed his own Dark Avengers team. Now, we're going to pick up with Dark Wolverine Volume 2. And this is the son of Wolverine, who was recruited by Norman Osborn to be on the Dark Avengers team. The problem is, Dakin does not like Norman Osborn and tries to ruin Norman Osborn's time as the leader of the Dark Avengers by doing different kinds of schemes. In this video right here, we're going to see Dakin do that once again with him trying to bring down Norman Osborn because Dakin is truly a crazy person. So if you do like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and I do hope you enjoy today's video. So getting into Dark Wolverine Volume 2, we pick up with Norman Osborn in his office and one of his assistants come to him about some upsetting news, which of course it is the fact that there is a video of Dakin being Wolverine in a battle, except in this battle, he was killing folks left and right. Of course, that is something the heroes don't do. Also the fact, there was a lady and her child nearby when he was killing someone. The way he talked to the lady, well, let's just say he wasn't really nice about it. Either way, this video is being played all over the internet. And of course, that means it makes Norman Osborn and the Dark Avengers look bad. So this freaks out Norman Osborn big time. Norman Osborn's team worked fast too. I mean, they were able to find out quickly who uploaded the video to the internet. Except we learned from Norman Osborn and his team that the video was classified information. So how in the world did this guy get the video? Well, then he explains that he got the video from some lady who handed him some money and told him to upload the video. So, of course, Norman Osborn team was able to find the girl very quickly. And, of course, we see her in the middle of a changing room. Except that is when she gets a phone call from someone. And this is letting us know that she is not really the one pulling the strings to make Dakin, Norman Osborn, and the Dark Avengers look bad. That really, she is just another puppet. Because this person on the phone with her tells her to run. Right now, Norman Osborn team is closing in on her and about to grab her. Except the way this person on the phone speaks, he is making it sound like he actually cares for her, tells her to run and cross the street, and he will be there to save her. Sadly, she does not make it. She actually gets hit by a car, and of course, she is now dead. We learn that the person on the phone who told her to run is no other than Dakin himself. He was the one who put the video out there, which of course was another way to get to Norman Osborn and hopefully bring him down. So of course, when word gets back to Norman Osborn over the fact that the girl Dakin gave the tape to had died, him and his team are wondering who released the tape. Does the reporter who reported the video know where it came from? These are questions Norman Osborn wants answers to. Now, Dakin appears, and with Dakin being there, well, it is Norman Osborn telling Dakin that he is upset with Dakin for what had happened. Dakin tells Norman Osborn the blame should really be pinned on the fact that there is a security leak. Still, you have Norman Osborn state they need to clean up Dakin's reputation and he already has a plan in motion to fix that. Later on, we pick up with Emily Doolin. This is a character who appeared earlier in this series when it was originally called Wolverine. 
She was trying to get revenge against Logan Wolverine because she was told that Logan was the one who killed her father, except it was a lie and when she found out, well she gave up chasing him down. We see her working some job in a department store and her boss is always trying to sexually harass her. Except after the boss leaves, well that is when she is confronted by Norman Osborn and he is offering her a job, a certain job that falls in line with her skills. She is not the only person Norman Osborn hires to help him with his big plan because the next couple pages we pick up with the Inquisitor. I do hope I pronounce his name correctly. And this is a throwaway character for this book. He was somebody that had tortured Wolverine back in the 1980s. Either way, he is right now torturing a judge to make a hearing for a certain case that involves a mutant to be open to the public. Meaning that now the public, like the media, can attend this hearing for whatever mutant is going to be involved in this hearing. The next day, we see that the public is able to attend this hearing. When we get introduced to two other people that Norman Osborne had hired to help him do some big thing. One of them is a guy called Cutthroat, who is a master hand-to-hand -hand combat person, and the other is Arian, Arian, I cannot pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Either way, he is a racist. The four people Norman Osborne had hired were brought together to break out Moses Magnum. Now Moses Magnum is a character I really don't want to sit down and explain. Just know he has the ability to generate powerful seismic waves from his hand. This whole thing is really a setup for these guys to break out Moses Magnum and they all escape. This is a perfect setup for Dakin to look great to the public. Oh yeah, Aryan or Aryan is killed off as well. So later on that day, you have Norman Osborn tell Dakin that everything is set up for him to make himself look better in the public eye. We can tell here that Dakin does not care about looking good and he's still planning to make Norman Osborn look bad. He is even plotting on how to make this all fall apart for Norman Osborn since Norman Osborn had gone out of his way to put all of this together. These two do not see eye to eye, except Norman Osborn wants Dakin on his Dark Avengers team. Now picking up with Moses Magnum, the Inquisitor, Cutthroat, and Emily Doolin, they weren't really told the truth about the reason why Norman Osborn had hired them. To them, this is all weird how someone like Norman Osborn came to them to pull this off since he has Hammer and also has the Dark Avengers. Except before they are able to try to piece everything together more and see what is the real purpose that Norman Osborn had hired them for, that is when you have Wolverine appear. Sorry, you have Dakin appear as Wolverine. Since he is the Wolverine on the Dark Avengers. His goal here is to stop these guys on camera without killing them to make him look better in the eye of the public. So with that being known to Dakin, for the others in the room, this was supposed to be some easy job to break out Magnum Moses. Now something to point out as well, these guys think they are dealing with Logan Wolverine, not Dakin Wolverine. Because to the public, Dakin is not well known. Except as the fighting continues on, they begin to see that this is not the Wolverine each of them have fought over the years. Also, while Dakin is fighting against them, cameras are rolling hoping to use this footage as a way to make him look good in the public eye. Except there's points where he is using his claws too much, points where he makes it look too easy. So he's making it hard for Norman Osborn team to make a good video. Except it gets to the point he takes one of Magnum Moses' blasts to the chest and of course blowing him away. So now you have Dakin basically down for the count now. That blast took most of his body off his bones. 
He has a healing factor, except it will take time for the healing factor to kick in and heal him up. So you have the people that Norman Osborne Hire tell Dakin that he is lucky that they are leaving and they are letting him live after being beaten down by them. Now, there's a moment where he sees his father Logan, who of course is not there. And remember that Dakin hates his father with a passion. So with that being said, when he sees his father, his father actually laughs and makes fun of him for failing to take down guys that Logan was able to defeat in the past. After they leave, you have the group realize that they have been set up. Everything they have done was to, of course, make Dakin look good in the eye of the public. So, the question is, what to do now? Also the fact, do they call in Norman Osborne and can they even trust Norman Osborne at all? Emily and Cutthroat were the ones to figure it out before the rest of the group really did. Except, they all agree to go ahead and call Norman Osborne to see if it is true that he really did set them up to be chopped liver for Dakin's reputation. Now when they do call up Norman, we can see that there are some trust issues between the members of this group. Except when Emily goes to call Norman, that is when she hears a news report about how Wolverine was able to stop them from getting away. We all know that is a lie since Dakin is technically on the ground back at the warehouse licking his wounds. Now Emily does get confirmation from Norman that he was planning to set them up to help Dakin out. Either way, she is planning to get revenge against Norman Osborne and the plan begins at this point. Now Emily goes back to her old job because she knew her boss was a creep and we saw that earlier except her plan is to trick him or force him to give over the tapes of the cameras that of course recorded the day Norman Osborne came into her job to visit her where we just get this scene and learn that her boss used the cameras more than just recording everything going around as security. That he actually hid cameras in places to catch women changing. So basically, this man is a creep. Emily is able to get the taste she wanted, but of course, she kills him after that. Emily takes it back to her team, and of course, they tell her the same thing you are probably thinking too. That hey, even though you have the tapes that prove he talked to you the day before we broke out Magnus Moses, it doesn't prove anything or enough proof to get people to believe that Norman is a bad guy. Except you have the Inquisitor tell them that he has a plan to make Norman Osborne give them a deal. Changing the focus back on Norman Osborne and Dakin, well of course, Norman is freaking out. And the reason why, because he received the video of him meeting Emily at the store. So he calls Dakin because now the plan is to capture Emily and the others and to kill them. That is when Norman Osborne gets a call from Emily telling him that she and the others plan to ruin Norman, Dakin, and the Dark Avengers unless he makes a deal that will actually make them be free men and women. Now, Norman Osborn team was able to trace the call and get the location. So then, Norman Osborn tells Dakin to go after them, but Dakin was planning on going after them to settle a score either way. With the final chapter, we open up with the idea of the group of Emily Cutthroat Inquisitor and Magna Moses wondering if Norman Osborn will go through with the deal. Except on the outside, he already has things in motion that will make Dakin look great in the eyes of the public. Now for Emily and her team, their goal is to surrender on camera because it is the only way to secure a chance of living. Norman Osborn would not take the risk of killing these guys on live television in front of the whole world. They know that they cannot trust Norman Osborn at all. 
he has a news reporter team outside waiting to report this scene of the crime and of course you have Dakin appear as Wolverine. He is supposed to go in there and just take these guys down but in a hero way not in a murdering everyone in the room kind of way. Now remember, you would think that Dakin is going to take these guys down right now since he did state that he has a score to settle when it comes to these guys. These guys did beat him last time, except he actually appears to be on their side. He tells them to take the tunnel they have set up to escape just in case Norman Osborn did not keep his word. This is Dakin telling them that Norman Osborn was not planning to keep his word. They need to leave through the tunnels right at this moment. Except Norman Osborn had the warehouse rigged with some bombs by some hammer agents. But also he heard Dakin giving them the heads up on what he was planning on doing. So of course this leads into the building being blown up with everyone being caught inside the explosion. After the explosion, you have Norman Osborn talk to Dakin in a way saying that he knew that Dakin would not listen to his plan. Norman knew Dakin would mess this up and states that Dakin is nowhere close to being as good as his father Wolverine. Except this is the moment you have Dakin surprise not just the public, but Norman Osborn and Wolverine as well. Because we see Dakin holding a baby in his arms. With the news channel team being there, well they are eating this up. To them it seems that Dakin was able to save a baby before the building blew up. Now Norman Osborn knows that Dakin planned this and Wolverine knows that his son is just a crazy person. The next page you have Norman Osborn at a press conference dealing with the media and all of their questions except they want to interview Dakin. Except after the explosion, well Dakin had disappeared from the hospital he was supposed to be staying at. So now the question is, where is Dakin? Well remember, Dakin did say that he had a score to settle, so he went after Emily and the others to of course kill them. Now in these pages, we only see that the Inquisitor is dead so far. This was supposed to paint a picture that everyone is dead except for Emily. We come to find out that Moses actually lived because he reappears in another book. Anyways, you have Emily and Dakin have this standoff where she tells him that she tried to kill his father for revenge. But this is her seeing that Dakin is truly a crazy person. But the book closes with her killing herself or trying to kill Dakin. The ending is up to you to believe what truly happened in this book. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.